Hey everybody, this is Brendan Smith, and I chose to do my presentation on cooperative security. So, what is cooperative security? Well, um, Wikipedia gave some clar clarification on that, by, and it said, The most important distinguishing of cooperative security is the proposition that peace is in effectively indivisible. So, cooperative security is essentially a grand strategy that involves combining forces with other nations to ensure legitimacy, lower spending, checks and balances, and power in numbers and inter in international decisions. So I'd like to share a video with you. Um, it's of President Barack Obama on his opinion of the purpose of the United Nations. And although I do not agree fully with everything that he says, I think that he puts this very clearly and very and he says this very effectively we have got to make not merely peace but a peace that will last the men and women who built this institution understood that peace is more than just the absence of war a lasting peace for nations and for individuals depends on a sense of justice and opportunity, of dignity and freedom. It depends on struggle and sacrifice, on compromise, and on a sense of common humanity. All right. So I think he says that very clearly and effectively and summarizes the purpose. Really, not, he's, he talks about the United Nations, but I think that applies to all um, systems of cooperative security. Some of the things he mentioned in there that are essential to a system of cooperative security being effective and also that are results of a system of cooperative security are justice, opportunity, dignity, freedom, struggle, sacrifice, compromise, and a sense of common humanity. So when and where has cooperative security been effective throughout the world? Well, just to name a few of the more modern systems, the United Nations, NATO, or North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the BRICS nations, or Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and the G20 nations. All of these are some major organizations that employ the system of cooperative security and they found it very effective through that employment. So why should the United States employ so cooperative security? Well, as I mentioned earlier, cooperative security can ensure legitimacy, lower spending, checks and balances, and power in numbers. It ensures legitimacy because there are multiple deciders for any decision, and that means multiple viewpoints or standpoints. And nations that are united in decision are forced to synergize, to cooperate, and to engage diplomatically, which therefore establishes legitimacy. Then with lower spending, I think this is more of a self-explanatory thing, but in a, in a system of cooperative security, cooperative, deci excuse me, <laughs> cooperative decisions involving spending are divided among the countries, thus reducing the cost for each country. And as you see here, an unaided intervention or a single nation trying to take care of a problem with their own spending would end up spending nearly three times as much as had it been sp split up among three separate countries. Or in some of the nation, or excuse me, some of the systems such as NATO or the United Nations or the BRICS or G20, they would end up spending far less than this as it's divided among many more countries. Therefore, they can effectively um, deal with their issues, but they can effectively deal with those in a very uh, less expensive manner. Third of all, checks and balances. Checks and balances simply equal a balance of power. And a balance of power can ensure cooperation and security among inside countries through intimidation. First of all, well, when we have several countries that are all combined in cause, then we, we know that their cause is going to be, um, for the most part, legitimate, as we've discussed before. 
but when it's legitimate, they need force behind it, and intimidation can come into play there. Also, diplomacy. Diplomacy is only stronger when you have more people behind your back, backing you. And with agreements and treaties, it's obviously self-explanatory. Many more countries involved in the same in the same uh, in the same aspirations will be able to more effectively create those agreements and those treaties and manage them. Last of all, one of the most important traits and values of cooperative security is the power in numbers. For example, one nation trying to go about accomplishing its goals by itself is one nation. One plus nothing equals one. However, when nations are combined, they unite and synergize, then they can they they have all that more all, all that power behind them and um, all of that unity to work to build upon. So, cooperative security offers unity in diplomacy, in finances, in military, politics, and as I stated previously, in intimidation. And all of these things will come into play throughout nearly every issue that a, a nation will run into. And so, through cooperative security, nations are able to synergize and to become more powerful through their numbers. Alright, that is my presentation. Thank you for listening, and here are my sources.